Alrighty, YouTube. Well, welcome back to Fern Valley Farm YouTube channel. We're on this channel. We're pure country. Uh, what we're going to do here is we're going to build deep boxes for our beehives, so stay tuned. Alright, we're back. We are going to build deep boxes for our beehives. Uh, spring will be here before you know it. It's only the end of November, but you know what? It'll come quick. And I've got about four splits to do this spring, and I need to get my hives. I need to build some more boxes. I'm going to build deeps first, and then I'm going to build supers. Um, obviously, I need the deep for as far as my splits go. I need my deeps first, and actually, I do, I do need I do need to get my supers built quicker too because I've got established hives. Knock on wood, everybody makes it through the winter. That will get supers put on pretty quick. So, uh, but I'm going to start with my deeps first. What you could do, and they're really easy to build. The dimensions of these things, I'm not sure why when these were invented, these are the Langstroft type, I think I'm saying that right, uh, style hives. Uh, the length of the box is 18, from inside to inside is 18 and 5 16 and the outside is, 50, is a 16 and 5 16 I'm not sure why they just didn't make it even numbers. I kind of really don't understand that. <laughs> it would have been nice if it was just like, you know, 18 by 16, but I don't know. There's obviously a reason, and whenever these frames were invented, they could have changed the shape of the frames too, but I don't know. Who am I to say, right? So anyways, if you get yourself 12-foot boards, if you go, like for your, your deeps, you got to use a 1 by 12, but you need a 1 by 12 by 12, and that board will give you four boxes. I'm sorry, two boxes. A 1 by 12 by 12 will, give, will make you two deeps. It'll make, you, it'll make you four long sides, it'll make you four short sides, and that'll give you two boxes. Um, but what you got to do is you still got to shave it. So you're going to cut it, and if you got a table saw, that works great. If you've got a radial arm table, table saw, that works really good. You'll get perfect cuts. Because after you cut it, after you cut it, this is actually the, obviously the long side. After you cut this, then you got to shave, you got to shave another, I'm not sure what it is offhand. But you put it on your table saw, and you'll shave that off too, and I'll show you guys how that works. But let me just turn this camera here so you can see. I'm not going to cut all this wood. You guys can kind of figure this out here, what I'm doing. Hold on here. It's always nice when I have a camera person. But I don't. So I'm just going to do a couple of pieces here really quick. You want to make sure you get these things measured just right. This one I've already drawn the line here for. Get it on your table saw. Get it cut. And here we go. So I'm going to go through and get all these cut. Here again, let me adjust the camera here so I can see what I'm doing. You want to get these things cut. Let me zoom out here, get back over here. Hang on. What I found works nice is you cut them just a little bit, maybe get, maybe leave yourself an eighth of an inch or a sixteenth of an inch when you cut these. So like when I cut this board, um, it should slip right in there, which it does actually. Um, maybe leave yourself a sixteenth of an inch. This way if you've got to shave it down, you can always take it off, but if you cut it too short, then you've got to start over and you're wasting wood. So you want to gut these things, cut. you want to get them cut, maybe leave yourself a little bit of room to play, and uh, then if you have to trim it, you can trim it. So I'm going to get the rest of these cut, and then we will go to the table saw, and uh, we will trim them the other direction here. Alright, we're going to get these uh, uh, Sides cut for the uh, for the deep boxes. You can see I got the all the other I got it all cut. So now we're going to cut on the router. We're going to cut the edge for where the frame hangs. I can get this out right. Don't worry. Uh, this is what I did already. You can kind of see you can kind of see the lip on here. See, there's a lip on here. You can see that, and uh, that's obviously where your frame sits. But you can see I got all my boards cut. Um, it's going to look like this. This is actually a super. But it's the same. It's the same principle right here as it is um, for the deeps. So I've got my long sides. Obviously, I'm only going to cut my short side, because the frame is going to hang on here. I'll cut one and show you. I'm not going to. I'm not going to cut them all. This thing is really loud. 
If you've got access to a router, it works really, really nice. If you're using one of these things, be really careful. These things are powerful. They'll just tear your they'll, they'll tear your finger right off if you're not careful. Um, if you got access to the router, that works out really good. Then you can make this nice edge out here for your frames to sit. I'll cut one and show you. And I have a frame. Oh, right here. I even have a frame as a guide. The edge I'm cutting on here, I made myself, and I made myself a template. You can think a piece of scrap wood. Um, like I said, if you have a router, you get yourself a piece cut. Then you can just adjust it to your router to where it's got to be. Let me zoom this route. Let me zoom this in so you guys can see this here. Let me zoom that in. So I've got just a piece of scrap wood that I cut, and you can just make yourself a template. Then you can adjust. This is. Then you can adjust your router bit every time, and you know exactly where it's at. This is actually a half-inch bit. You could buy these bits any any. There we go, Menards. Like I. And believe it or not, Menards doesn't pay me to talk about them. I just love going to Menards. They should pay me, right? Anyways, okay. So, um, this is a half-inch router bit. It's going to give you that straight cut. Like I said, if you're using one of these things, be really, really careful. They will eat your fingers. I've never had it happen, knock on wood. I don't plan on it happening. Just stay focused. So, I will turn this on, and I will cut a couple of them so you can see it. It's really loud. nice straight edge right there and your frame that'll give you a pr good spot for your frame to sit right on there to give you an exact like I said that's a half inch bit um, to give you an exact measurement just kind of play around with it with yourself but that's about a little that's about three quarters of a cut you want to have a good I like to leave a good a 3 16 um, lip between let me see if I can show this on camera here I can't really hold two things where this sits, to have your little bit, your B space right here. Hold on, right there. Have your B space right there. This way, there's enough room. Um, and obviously, I took this off of one of the one of the one of the manufactured ones. This is actually a manufactured. This is actually a manufactured super. So I took this measurement off of this. Um, so that's that. So I'm going to get all these things cut, and then uh, we'll get to the next step nailing them together. So let me get these things cut and we'll be right back. Boxing together. Um, what, I, what I just realized I said earlier about the about the bit for the router, it's not a half inch, it's three quarters. It's a three quarter inch bit um, that cuts this that cuts this edge for your frames <clears throat> to sit on. Three quarters, not a half inch. So anyways, all right, we've got these boards cut. One thing I want to show you guys what I made, it makes things a little bit simpler. I made myself some jigs. And you can make these out of scrap board. You can make them out of anything. These are just two by twos. This is just some uh, OSB board. But what I've got is two different sizes here that I've made. So it makes this simpler when you want to get your boards cut perfect. Like I said, use a, I used a store manufacturer. I used the manufacturer deep and super to measure off of. They're the same exact size. It's obviously, the, as far as dimension goes, they're the same. But height, they're different. So, um, I just use the store-bought machine manufactured one to measure off of. This way, it's exactly perfect. And like I said, the dimensions are, are a little off. They're like, I forget exactly. 
Yeah. But they're not an exact number. You'll see when you go to measure them. But just measure off your box and get your exact dimension. I'd have to measure it really quick. It's just like an odd. It's like 16 and 3 sixteenths, which who knows why they come up with that. And width is like, I got it. This is actually at 20 inches. But sometimes it's like 9 or 19 and 9 sixteenths. It's really weird. So... I've got my jigs cut for 18 and 3 eighths. That's for the long side of the hive. And you can see you get it cut, and you take your board, slip right in. There's your perfect size right there. For the, uh, for the front, that's the, that'd be the sides of your deep or your super. And for the front, I've got it measured at 16 and a quarter. And like I said, you take the board when you want to cut them. Of course, this one's a little bit off. No, there it goes. There, see? Slides right in. Perfect. This one's going to fight me. Okay. If it's just a hair big, you can always trim it. If it's a hair little, you're okay. So see, it just slides right in. It's hard to do, it's hard to do this when you're holding it up. So, anyway, that'll give you, you can cut your boards pretty close, and then build yourself one of these, and uh, you can make them exact. Then this way, when you go right down the whole line of all this stuff, you can just put it over there and just put it in, take your uh, take your miter box saw, cut it, and you're good. So, I've got these jigs. Let me get them out of the way. You can see i got a, a big mess down here, but I know where everything's at. I'm going to put these over here. <clears throat> what I've got here is another jig that I built. And this one, here again, just scrap lumber, nothing fancy, but all this... Is, cut, is all set for one of these boxes to fit right in there. And here again, just take yourself a piece of scrap, get your box in there, you know, put your pieces in, put some glue on, let them set for a minute, flip it over. I just drywall screwed it is all I did. And it works out good. Then, I've got a piece of 2x2 two two on the edge right here. So what sits on your bench, it'll just bump right up to it and it won't slide. I don't like trying to nail it. You can put these boards in here like this. And you can nail it that way if you want. Three nails and glue. But the problem is when you put the glue on here and you set it down, it's going to run. But I'll show you how I use this jig when I'm done. Let's move all this out of the way. And I am going to build one more jig. But I'm using an American Girl doll box. This box is almost exactly the same height uh, or you know width of your box lengthwise. So what I do is I'm going to take, and I'll try not to stand in front of the camera here, but it's hard. I'm going to take my boards and I'm going to start them. Get a nail started on each one. I'll put this up here. I'll take my long side and I'm going to glue it. Am I in the way here? That's not too bad. Okay. Um, and I always try and make one side. Like I said, when you're using this, when you're using this uh, standard lumber, they're not. When you buy two different boards, they're not exactly the same. They're all. They can be off by like a sixteenth of an inch. So I just make sure the bottom is exact, flush here. So then when it sits on top of the hive, um, it's sitting flush. Now if there's a space up here, the bees will fill it in. They'll, they'll, put, they'll put propolis in there and fill it. <clears throat> or if it's really off, you might have to trim it. Um, if you buy, the, if you buy the, like the, the premium grade lumber, that's perfectly, perfectly cut. You won't have these issues. So anyway, take the glue. I'm going to beat a glue here. Set that right there. I am going to, like I said, I'm going to build an exact size uh, jig for this too. It just makes it easier. Like I said, trying to do this on here. Um, just get it started. Then come to the other side. Let me, come, let me stand on this side here. Now there are knots in here, which I didn't see that before I put that nail in. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to turn because you don't want to try and nail into a knot. If you do, it's just going to split. So I'm going to just turn that board that way. Glue on. 
you can glue it and it's fine, but you don't want to try and nail it. This board actually cracked on me, but that's fine. Once it's all glued together, and if there are if there's some cracks in your board here again, that ain't a big deal. The bees will fill that in. But once it's all nailed and glued, it don't make a difference. So, like I always say, the bees don't care. All right, let's get that started. Flush, take drive that one all the way in. Make sure your nails didn't pop out. Make sure you got your nails going in straight. When you hit this down hard, some of your glue might run. Just take your finger on the inside and the outside and uh, just run it smooth. So I'm going to put two nails. Where's that now? Right there. So I'm going to do like this. Now this board is off a little bit, so I'm going to... I'm going to nail this flush. Now I can pull that that way. Okay, but that knot is there, so just move that a little bit. Actually, I'm going to flip it over to the other side. And like I said, if you get glue, if you get glue on the inside, just take your finger, run it, makes it nice and smooth. And when this stuff dries, it dries really nice. And if for some reason if you screw it up and something ain't square or right, once it's dry, you can take a hammer and just pop it, it'll pop right off. Um, but this glue is really strong. So I'm going to take my other board. I'm trying to do this without standing in front of this camera. I ain't nothing more annoying than when you can't see. Uh, see, there's a knot right here, so i got to avoid that, so I'm going to start a nail here. Nice to get them started. Like I said earlier, you can pre-drill them. The only problem with pre-drilling is you don't get a good bite. If you drill this hole right here, um, it'll it'll go in real nice and straight. I put that too far. Um, it'll go in nice and straight, but it ain't grabbing like you want it to. So that's why I don't drill them. And this pine is so soft, uh, the chance of it splitting are pretty slim. I mean, it can. If you start seeing it splitting, then just go ahead and pre-drill it. I'm going to take this now. I'm going to get it up here. I'm going to glue. I'm going to glue the one side. I don't mind using a little extra glue because, like I said, right here then on the seam, I'll just run my finger and make that nice and smooth. Make sure you got the correct lip here and here. You know why I'm saying that, don't you? Because I've done it this way before. I put the whole thing together. It's like, whoops. I got my frame lip here on one side. And on the bottom on the other. So let's just make sure it's right, which is. That's how you learn from your mistakes, right? Put that on there. Nice and flush. Just kind of get it started. Don't drive it in all the way. Just get it started so it doesn't move. A lot of times when you drive it in all the way, for me anyways, you do that and it's off. So now I'm going to put some glue here. You see that? Yeah. That there. Get this. This board is off a little bit, but you can kind of twist them a little. Get straight. Right there. Yeah, I can pull that. Now that's straight there. I'm going to drive them all the way home. Come over here. I'm going to get that board. Good. Now, come to this side. I'm going to watch it now. So I'm going to, instead of putting the nail in the front, I'm going to put it about three inches back. And I can pull it straight this way. See, I got all that extra glue, which is fine. Just take your finger. When all that stuff dries, it'll really hold this thing together. And I got one other tip I'm going to show. Boom. At this side. Let's get this together here. And I'm going to show you in a minute one of that other jig comes in handy. I didn't build it just for fun. I'm going to show you. There's a reason behind it. So I'm going to put, like I said, you can see that knot. 
I'm going to put, I got one here, one here. Normally I'd go back there, but if I try and hammer into that, it's going to split. So I'm just going to put it right here. The glue will hold all that together. So now you can see, let me see on the camera and the seam there, there's glue, which is fine. You take your finger, run it smooth, run it smooth, and you're good. Okay, now, don't assume your box is square. <laughs> And I'm telling you this because I hear again, I found out the hard way. You put something together, you think you're done, it dries, you're like, wait a minute, that's all whopper jawed. So, I'm going to take my jig now that I built, and I'm going to put it right in there, and I'm going to put it in there. Now it's square. You put it in that jig, you see this, you put this in there, it ain't moving, but it's all nice and tight. That squares it off. Because just because you put it together and nail it, doesn't mean it's square. It can be twisted one way or the other. So now you put it there, and then I always do one more, oh, one more thing. This is a little time consuming, but you're building it yourself, and you're saving yourself a bunch of money. If you've got the time, and you've got the equipment, which fortunately I do. So now I'm going to take my store-bought box. I'm going to lift this out of here. Okay, it's in pretty tight. Lift that out. I've got that thing set exactly to the size box. I'm going to put this on here. You see? You see? There it is. It fits perfect. And if it is off a little bit, which just one is, you can take it and you can take it and you can push it. You can, you can adjust it just a little bit. Right. Now it's flush. Like I said, don't assume that when you nail that together, it's square. Because most of the times it probably is, but it's real easy to put it together and think it's square. And if you don't check it with something, that's why I check it with a store-bought box. Because those, those, all them seams are manufactured, um, exact. So even some of those are off just a little bit. I mean, you're not going to get a perfect one. <coughs> but that gives you a really good close idea of... Uh, to make it exactly perfect. So I'm going to go ahead and put the rest of these together and I'll show you the next step. I'm going to put handles on them and then I'm going to put like a little notch. I'm going to put a little notch and I will show you that when I get to that part. Uh, how many times have you gone to your hives in the summertime trying to get your hive tool in there and the bees got it purpleized so bad you can't get it open. I'll usually take my hive tool and take a hammer and just tap it and uh, get the hive tool in that seam and then it'll pop loose. I'm going to actually put, which I'll show you when I get to it, um, you can see in the background back there, I got some of the boxes already, it's kind of hard to see, but let me zoom this camera in. You see them right there? Right? Where's my finger at? Right? There. <laughs> there's, there they, there's some of them. Uh, and the supers and my other stuff is next to it, but I'll, when I get to that, I'll show you guys. But anyways, um, yeah, I'm going to put a little notch in the backs, on the back side of these, so I can put my hive tool, not too big to where bees can get in there for robbing, just big enough for the, for that hive tool or a screwdriver or just to pop in there and pop it loose. Because I don't know how many of my boxes I've chipped trying to get them open because the bees propolize it so much in the summer that uh, you can't get the hive tool in there. I take a hammer and I tap it, and I'll put it like here, and I'll just kind of tap it, and it still chips the wood. Well, I don't go through all this trouble and start destroying these boxes, so. I'm going to go ahead and put the rest of these together. I've got, I'm building, well, how many am I building? I forget now. I think I'm building enough for five hives, two for each hive for all my splits that I plan on doing in the spring. Um, so, let me get the rest of these built, and then we will get to the next step. Right, I'll be right back. These handles put on now. Let me grab my nails. And this is where all your wood scrap comes in handy. Actually, when I trimmed, when you buy a 1 by 12, you've got to trim about an inch and a half off to make it the same size as a regular deep. <clears throat> you could, this is actually a manufactured deep, store-bought. You could use this for your measurements, get an exact measurement off it. Um, when you trim them, when you trim the excess wood, you get about... Uh, an inch and a half. I just take two of these. Obviously, it's about that long. I just cut it in half. 
and there's my handle. So what I did is I already put the glue on. I just glue it so it kind of holds it in place. I'm trying to do this, I'm out of the camera here. Turn it over. I use, I want to say these are number four. Let me just check real quick. It's right here. Yeah, these are four D sinkers. These will not go all the way through the board. So you can just kind of look underneath, see where your handle is. It's right about there. I like to tap it in, check, make sure it's centered. It didn't, I didn't miss it on any side, which I did. So I'll let it stand. And the glue just gives it a little bit extra strength. <clears throat> Double check it again, we're good. I don't have a tool. I mean, I suppose I could try the cutout. You know, when you buy when you buy the deeps, when you buy the manufacturer stuff, <clears throat> which I'm sure most of you guys know, or if you're new to this, you don't know. It comes with a handle already notched into it. I'm not gonna try and do that. It'd be a pain. In the, it'd be a pain in the butt to try and cut that thing out. I don't have the tool for that. This works just as fine. And you've got scrap, why buy anything else, right? Use your scrap and you're good. So, that one's straight and center. I'm going to flip it over. I'm going to put some glue. Just run a bead of glue. Like that. Basically center it. Once you do this, once you do this enough times, you'll get an eye for it to see where the center is. Uh, and like I said, having glue on will give you your added strength. Because these things are pretty heavy. When they're full of honey and full of bees or whatever, they're pretty heavy. And in the fall, when you feed your bees up, these things can be 60, 70 pounds. So this handle obviously gives you a good grip. Now, like for my, my ventilation boxes, I didn't put handles on those because those obviously are light. On my uh, top feeder frames, I put handles on those because you need something to grab hold. But like the... the, the <laughs> the light stuff, uh, ventilation boxes or insulated inner covers, you don't got to put handles on those because they're light. So I let it just sit for a second and I'll just real easily turn it over and it moved on me, but that's okay. I just put the other box there to brace it so it's standing up straight. I'll just look to see where it's at. It's right about there. I'll just start a nail, make sure off just a little bit so I can just recenter it. That's all. Let's readjust it. Flip it back over. Lay it straight. You can wait to a little bit longer for the glue to set, but um, for the video here, I just kind of did. I always start both nails. Make sure it's straight, which it is. It never fails. You drive that nail all the way in, both of them, it's going to be crooked. That's just how life seems to work sometimes. So, it's straight. I put three nails. And I'm good. So that's, here's, here's some of the other ones here. Um, I got them on the floor here. Let me, let me lower the camera. You can see these are already set. These are already glued. And the handles are dry. I got a few more to do in the back. Um, but you guys don't need to watch me do everything here. Let me raise the camera back up. Sure, nice when you got a camera person. So, anyways, that's my deep. The handles are on. You got something good and solid to hold on to. You're ready to go. Um, so, I'm going to go ahead and put the rest of the handles on. And that's it. Uh, hopefully you learned something from this. Hopefully you liked the video. Give me a thumbs up, questions, comments, whatever. I'm good. Um, <clears throat> consider subscribing to the channel. Support the channel. There's a little bell next to the subscribe button. Click the bell. You'll get a notification next time I make a video. So, on to the supers, which that'll be the next video. I'm going to start putting the supers together. It's early January here. I'm getting a good jump start on this stuff because May will be here before you know it. And I need all these boxes. I'm doing, planning on doing all these splits at the beginning of May, and I want to have everything ready. So I'm getting everything put together. So until next time, YouTube, I will talk to you guys later. Bye.